And for him to ask Artaxerxes for help? King, I know my God is mighty, but he's not as mighty as like your army, so can you help us out? Would not have looked very good. It would, have, it, would have, it would have facilitated some embarrassment. So they fast and they pray. They divide up the treasure. And they each leave at a different time. And Ezra tells them that at an appointed day and time, they will meet in front of Jerusalem, in front of the temple, and see who and what makes it through. Now I want you to imagine Ezra. He's the first to arrive in front of the temple. He doesn't know who's made it. So he's watching over the horizon. And he sees the first caravan. And he sees the second caravan. And he sees the third. He's starting to crack a smile, but he's still got concern for his brothers who are five, six, seven, all 24. And at the sight of the 24th, a mini worship service probably erupted like none we've ever seen before because God has intervened and restored the nation of Israel to their once past glory. God has been faithful throughout history. Now no one, no one could say God has abandoned Israel after this. Why would a pagan king give wealth back to a nation that could potentially become a superpower and an enemy did not make sense to anyone except for the fact that God was at work. Because God's ways are not our ways. God, every once in a while, gives us extraordinary opportunities to do extraordinary things. I believe that Portage Avenue Church, our new home, is an extraordinary opportunity for us to do extraordinary things. If we're willing to take advantage of the opportunities he gives us, three things jump out at me as I read this passage. The first thing is that God took these Jewish people who had a completely different agenda and gave them favor with the non-Christians, with the non-believers, with those who didn't believe in God. God as we believe in him, will give us favor in the eyes of those who don't. It was a couple years ago, Youth for Christ wanted to build this huge ministry center in the core of downtown Winnipeg that serviced youth for Christ. And God decided that a Jewish mayor and a council full of non-Christians and, 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 and a political government called the NDP would give Youth for Christ over half the money they needed to build the building. Amazing. And the, the mayor, Mayor Sam Cates, and the premier took a ton of heat, of political heat for that. And they didn't care. They kept on going. As we believe, God will give us favor in the eyes of those who do not believe. God's already giving us amazing opportunities at this church and he hasn't even scratched the surface yet. The question is, are we going to do the same thing here, week in and week out, or will we take advantage of the opportunities that he gives us? When we move to Portage Avenue Church, are we going to do the same thing that we've been doing, or are we going to do some different things? Look around. We're full. When we get into Portage Avenue Church, there's going to be three times as much room, if not more. I'm going to have the ushers put ropes on the back 10, 15, 20 pews so you can't sit there. So you have to sit in the first 10, 15, 20 rows. Because I don't want to go to the back. Brother Morris! 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 <laughs> I'm like, 
want you to be right here. I don't want you to wait 10 seconds for the sound of the worship team to get to you. Are you ready to embrace creating new environments that transform not just the face, but the very character of heart of worship? Are you ready to cross this desert with gold and silver to build the kingdom of God? I hear amens, but you realize that that gold and silver is the gold and silver that he's given to you. Good. Remember, we didn't earn Portage Avenue Church. We didn't deserve it. But it's happening, and it's just begun. Second thing, um, turn to Ezra 7. I know you're already at Ezra because I give you that chance. Ezra 7, the last two verses, as Sister Florence read for us so eloquently, um, right after Ezra realizes that God has given him this incredible opportunity and God's favor is with the nation, once again, Ezra 7, 27 and 28. Praise be to the Lord, the God of our fathers, who has put it into the king's heart to bring honor to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem in this way, and who has extended his good favor to me before the king and his advisors and all the king's powerful officials. Praise be. Thank you, God. There is no way I could have pulled this off. This is unbelievable. I'm not capable of this. This is you. Now check this out. Because the hand of the Lord my God was on me, I took courage and gathered leading men from Israel to go up with me. When Ezra realized he had an opportunity, he realized he had to act on it. And when Ezra realized God was at work and had provided his people an opportunity, it was time. He couldn't sit back and wait for somebody else to do it. He couldn't sit back and, and wait. He realizes this is the opportunity, this is the time. So with courage, he chooses trustworthy men and they return the treasure to Israel. I'm about to get vulnerable now, so pay attention. I feel like, at times, there are areas that I don't lead you with diligence and courage, like I should. When I read this, it was like God is saying, and I'm providing part of worship with an incredible opportunity. I have blessed your church and you are the leader. You've got to gather your courage and lead this congregation forward. You've got to gather the people in positions of leadership and get moving. And I felt like God is saying, this is the time. We've been here in this place doing Sunday in and Sunday out. No, this is the time. I have been faithful from day one when I began this church, and now you're going to see that throughout history. This is the time. This is not the end. This is the beginning. Warning, don't get comfortable. Because it's time for us to cross the desert. I will pray and I will lead, and God will blow the roof off of this church. You think worship is hot right now? Some of you are going, oh great, Pastor Ed's going to leave now. Now what? What does that have to do with this whole series, Money Talking? He's been talking about opportunities all morning. I, I haven't heard the Money series yet. The third thing. When I was reading the story about the treasure houses, I said to myself, that's too easy. It's not fair. King walks up and says, hey, would 25 tons of gold and silver be okay? All Ezra had to do was gather the people. That'd be like TD Canada Trust, you know, giving our financial team a call this week and saying, hey guys, we've got about $25 million lying around. How would Heart of Worship like some of that money? Uh, we'll put it in a couple of minivans and send it over next Sunday. Think of all the opportunities we could think of what we could do with that money. If it was 
give it to us like that for free. And then God gave me a thought. I've already provided, he said to me, heart of worship with all the wealth and money it needs to take advantage of the new opportunities I'm giving you. But you haven't collected it yet. And there are around 150, 170, 180 people that call Heart of Worship their home. I have distributed my money around these people to manage it. You haven't collected it yet because you haven't